Hello, um, today we will show you step-by-step -step installation of the auxiliary tank for the KTM 690 Enduro. It works in fact also for the SMC. For the model years 2019 up to 2023. Yeah, this one is 23, but it works the same way backwards to 2019. When you buy the auxiliary tank from Rade Garage, you will get following things in a package, yeah? You will get the tank itself with a fuel cap, the heat protection foil, two pre-oiled foam filters, the dust cover, the small airbox, the cage uh, for the airbox, uh, the carbon ignition cover, and the mounting pack and tubes. Guys, now we remove uh, the mood guard. One big recommendation, before you start actually uh, the tank installation, we recommend that you almost run out, out of fuel, yeah? You have the reserve, as few fuel you have in the tank, it's better for the installation. Because now, and this should be the very, stress, uh, very first step, we recommend even to do it one day ahead, the main installation, you have to remove uh, the fuel pump. It's on four bolts. Yes, so you have to you have to get it out. Yeah, and then of course when you open it, you will get a splash of of fuel. Yeah. Now we will remove uh, the plastics. Here is a pin. So you open it like this. Here you lift up, and then you lift in, in the front. Yeah, and you have the first plastic part out. Yeah. To remove this uh, side panel, uh, take out the rubber, and then we go bolts. Here is one bolt, second bolt, third bolt, fourth one, and here from the front is the fifth one. Yeah. When all the bolts are out, so here is a pin. So again, you lift it like this and the side panel is out. Now we need to remove the seat supports. So here are three bolts. Now we need to take out uh, the cover. You put the hands like this and you just pull it out. We need to remove also the seed locks. Yeah, so one and second. <laughs> to be able to remove uh, the original airbox, we need to get out these plastic panels and this radiator. So I start with the radiator because the bolt holding the airbox is hidden behind it. Now we need to remove this and this deep bolt to be able to open the plastic cover. Again, on this side, we will remove the bolt holding, holding the airbox. We disconnect here the tube and we do here in the back, again, the bolts that are holding the airbox. We do it also on the other side. Now we need to cut the zip tie. On the left side of the motorcycle, there you see the flange going from the airbox to the engine. And here are two sleeves, one sleeve and the second sleeve. So you have to release now the sleeve that is closer to the engine, this one in our case. Now take all tower to protect the frame, long screwdriver, and you will work like a lever. And you lift it up like this and it's done. Now we need to remove this connector you push here a lot and then you and then you pull it out now we are on the right side of the motorbike and you see here there are two tubes secured by the zip ties so now we are speaking about the upper one so we need to cut the zip tie now we remove the tube it's very easy and now we can finally put out uh, the original airbox Done. We need to get out of the original airbox uh, the heat sensor and um, the rubber snorkel, the rubber tube, how we call it. So we simply remove these two screws. You release this 
sleeve closer to the airbox and now you will pull it out it's long it's up to here yes yeah? so you do it like this and now at this stage you put your thumb and you do this to get it out let's take the small airbox uh, put the sensor inside make sure that uh, this pin is outside and screw in now prepare um, the arm and the two self-tapping screws uh, it looks like from the top that there is not hole but it's not true yeah when you look from the bottom so there is a uh, hole for the uh, for the screws yeah here is a small mark yes yeah? so to make it easier uh, the screwing I suggest you put it here and you press it a little bit so you make the mark a little bit bigger yeah on on uh, on both sides so you have the arm prepare uh, the torx uh, 20 you go diagonally inside uh, the airbox you hold it from the bottom with your with your uh, with your fingers yeah. you take the self tapping screw hold it there oops take the torx and at the beginning it's fine just to catch it yeah and you can do uh, the second one uh, in fact the same way what is important first that you screw it in but when you start feeling that you are already uh, touching the surface yeah so then you go very carefully it's fine to go another quarter of turn maximum half turn yeah because if you do more it's possible but you might destroy uh, the plastics yeah and it's not necessary even now it's very stable there now you take the original rubber intake we need to get it in so press it here in the, in the middle squeeze it like this insert it yeah and then you see here is the rim so you need to get it inside yeah yeah um, the, the the check is that you see the rim it's a little bit above the surface of the airbox on one side on the other side is lower now here you can see a small mark yeah and here is also a small mark so it has to be aligned yeah now you take the screwdriver and you will tighten the sleeve what is important to say that this is steel sleeve going against rubber and plastic yeah so uh, you should use only appropriate amount of force yeah when I see already the tension I stop and I check yeah if I cannot rotate it's a snorkel so I think it's good enough so they don't go any dust inside yeah and on the other hand you don't destroy the shape of the airbox so please uh, be careful with that the last thing on the small airbox you put there the tube one remark before you will enter the small airbox here is a quick release uh, on the fuel line from the uh, fuel pump to the engine yeah sometimes happen to people that they by accident touch only slightly this quick release and then after they cannot start the engine so so when inserting the small airbox make sure you don't touch this uh, connect the heat sensor then above the cylinder head insert the tube like this and now we are ready to put the airbox on on the intake like this center it yeah and then from the left side again secure the sleeve prepare it more or less like this yeah measure it and cut it yeah, and then you can in insert it immediately now we need to connect um, the breathing from the engine yes yeah, so what we do we cut it here more or less in in between yeah um, 
what is helpful to use a little bit of grease on the tea because then it's easier to, to insert in. Yeah. And it's done. Now you, now you take the foam filter. You see it's already pre-oiled, yeah, so it's better to use the gloves. Yeah. And it fits there this way. It's not in the center, it's a little bit more on one side. This is also on one side. So turn it like this, yeah, and you need to insert the cage inside the foam filter. Yeah. The holes should be more or less aligned here. Now we take the dust cover. It goes a logo type on logo type. Yeah. Again, make sure that the holes are aligned. Yeah. And then take the quick release fastener, put it inside, and we are ready to put it on the airbox. Yes. So you take a bit of grease and you put it around the surface. Yeah it will further increase uh, the sealing with the uh, foam filter. One more info for you. This is kind of uh, thing to center it correctly on the airbox. Yeah, it's on both sides. And this goes onto the arm here. Yeah, so this will help you to guide you in there. Yeah, and then what is important to be like this at the beginning, you push and you turn and it's there. Um, now take the bracket, yeah, this is important, the orientation. So it goes like this U and, and this hooks go to the back down. Yeah, and then you take the M6 by 16 bolts uh, with the bigger head. And here are the holes in the frame with the, with the thread. So you go from the outside and you go in, in this hole and you do the same thing on the other side now take the M8 uh, nuts yeah, and you secure, you secure the bolts oh. now we need to prepare the tank first we suggest Take a marker, here is such a line, yeah? So just make, make a mark somewhere here in, in, this, in this direction actually, yeah? Because we will stick here the heat foil, yeah? So this is not useful anymore then, so it's better to have it here. Now take the heat foil, uh, align it so it's the same length on both sides, yeah? And just uh, make a marker here and here more or less, yeah? And then you go test it like this and it's okay, yeah? Now we take the marker and we say we need to be more or less here. We can have a hole and either you take scissors or carpet knife yeah, and you, you cut it out. So now we have the hole. Uh, we peel uh, the protection uh, from the back side. Sticking, I would start here uh, hole yeah, and you go step by step. Uh, to the front and to the back. I would rather start on, on this side always, yeah, because here is, a, here is a step on this side, so we will make it uh, later. Now you see here is a step, so I suggest here more or less you, you cut it like this, yeah, and then you go you, you can do how many cuts actually you, you want. Yeah, it's freestyle a little bit. Yeah, and we, so we do, we do here one, one more so we comfortably get inside. Now prepare uh, the banjo, banjo bolt and two special washers uh, with, a, with a seal. Yeah. What is important that you put first one washer on the banjo bolt, the banjo itself, and the second washer. And now you are ready to bolt on. 
first just finger tight. Now you remember we made here the mark, so make sure um, it's pointing on the mark. Now what is recommended if you have torque wrench, set it up on 12 newton meters. It's written even here that the maximum moment is 12 newton meters for this. If you use more power, could happen that you will destroy the inlay in the tank and the tank will start leaking. Yeah. If you don't have the torque wrench, you can do it, of course, with your hand, but do it gently, please. Yeah. So again, make sure you have correct direction according to the mark. Yeah. Take the torque wrench. Yeah. Now take the full hose, uh, the sleeve, and uh, put a little bit of grease. It's easier to, to insert it. Put it on and secure with a screwdriver. Now take again the original bolt that was holding the airbox. Yeah, you go from outside with a tiki like this. Take a take a nut. Yeah, and just secure it secure it here, and do it the same way on the other side. Now we need to remove these two OEM grommets. Take a screwdriver, put it around the edge. And take the thread inserts from the mounting package and put it there instead of the original grommets. You see on the right side there is a harness. So what is good? First with your fingers just to try to put it aside as much as possible. If it's not enough then you cut the zip tie, yeah? but we will see later. Now take the Velcro. Uh, what is important? Here is the back side and here is the, the Velcro part. Yeah? So the, the back part has to be on top like this. You go under the frame tube. Yeah. Now you go into this um, hook yeah, and you prepare it like this. Now we are ready to insert uh, the tank, but we start with uh, the full hose. You go around the ABS and, and out of the bike. Yeah. Um, and now we start entering first in the front. Yeah and we sit it in there. Um, the tank might be a little bit on the left side because of the harness, which is not necessarily wrong. Important is that it's really in front, touching actually uh, the other liquid uh, reservoir. Yeah, and in the back it sits on the, on the holder. Uh, if the tank is not sitting enough, so here is the harness again and it's zip tie. So you can cut the zip tie, put the harness aside and make sure the tank is sitting really where it should. Now you take the original seat supports and original bolts, but only two, because this one, uh, there is already a bolt holding the tank bracket. Yes, yeah, so you, we stay now with the two original bolts here. Yeah. What you can do on this side, you can put the Velcro strap under the frame tube again, yeah, and secure it. Now we take again uh, the seat locks and we mount them back. Oh. Now we take the carbon ignition cover and two bolts M5 by 40. We put it there, yeah. Um, first, you finger tight. Um, if you need, you might align a little bit uh, the thread inserts if necessary. And then you uh, tighten it, but again carefully, yeah, because you are going against carbon, so you have to be gentle. Here is the fuel cup, there is a, uh, there's a seal inside, here is the vent. Yeah, um, the vent allow to breathe in the tank, but when you fall down, it will prevent uh, the fuel will uh, leak out, yeah, or at least not much of it. Now from the right side of the motorbike, uh, more or less in this area, here is the SAS system. The place where we have removed one of the tubes uh, going to the airbox. Uh, we recommend uh, to take out this bolt holding the SAS system and you take out the SAS. Now prepare this pink tube. Just make sure it's long enough because the SAS uh, output 
has a bigger diameter than the tube itself so we need to heat up uh, the tube either you put it in boiling water for a while or second option you take the lighter yeah and you heat it up with a with a lighter carefully of course once the tube is inserted you secure it with a zip tie now this is the way how you insert the pink tube it goes behind the the, the brake uh, liquid tube yeah here around the um, injection and here up yeah and you will connect it above the engine now you take again the original bolt and, uh, and the spacer and you bolt on the SAS uh, unit bag now you take out uh, the full pump gouge um, here are small locks plastic locks on both sides so you just squeeze them and now you can take out the the upper cover and now you hold the metal part be careful to take out uh, the plastic gouge guys now take the spacer um, remove the the banjo and, and the bolt take the foil pump cover uh, you put it on uh, you don't need now the, the o-ring just remember uh, the o-ring goes on top the big o-ring and here is the original seal yeah and we need to drill a hole into the foil pump cover yeah so you mark through the outflow now you drill carefully eight millimeter hole yeah uh, so especially be be careful don't destroy the original seal um, the hole is done yeah uh, now put on the spacer um, put back the banjo with the bolt and the cooper washers yeah, it's very important at this moment only finger tight yeah and put also back uh, the big uh, the big o-ring i will take the m5 by 50 bolts and you bolt on you bolt on the spacer to the to the foil tank now you tight all four bolts and carefully yeah don't don't over tight uh, because it goes into your tank and if you damage the threads in the tank you are in big troubles. Now we will install the fuel tap. So you need two sleeves, um, the spacer. Remove this bolt here. Use the, the fuel tap, the bolt and the spacer and, and put it in this place. And bolt on here. Not tight much yet. Keep certain flexibility. Measure correctly and cut the full holes, put on the sleeve yeah, and insert, insert the, the fuel tube. Now secure the sleeve. Now use the remaining part of the fuel, fuel hose, insert it first on the, on the banjo bolt. Now put the sleeve on, on the banjo yeah, and also secure it. Now the last step to finish the fuel line, um, mark again the length, cut it. Uh, prepare the, the sleeve yeah, and insert it on the foil tab and again uh, secure the sleeve and don't forget to tight the, the, the bolt uh, holding the, the foil tab now tighten uh, the, the banjo bolt and, and don't forget to, to put back the, the mood guard Finally, the tank is there, everything is connected. Uh, so congratulations to your great mechanical job. And you can start enjoying the extra full range with our auxiliary tank. Thank you.